That's right. Nothing says irresistible like a weird baby mask. Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and today I want to talk about the 2023 Goosebumps revival. Rather than doing an anthology series like the books or 90s TV adaptation, this Goosebumps adaptation instead tells a serialized story featuring all of the same characters and uses Stein's books for loose inspiration. The result is kind of an R.L. Stein mixtape. I had a lot of fun with this series, so let's get into it. Light spoilers for Goosebumps 2023 and the Goosebumps book series and 90s TV show. I loved the Goosebumps books as a kid in the early 2000s. I don't know if I read all of them, but I certainly read most of them. Some of my favorites were The Werewolf of Fever Swamp, Welcome to Camp Nightmare, and Be Careful What You Wish For. But it's hard to pick just a few because there were so many good ones. I was a child who loved scary stories. The scary stories to tell in the dark books were also kind of formative for my love of horror. But I didn't watch too much of the original Goosebumps show that aired in the 90s, although it would have been right up my alley. I was more of an Are You Afraid of the Dark kid? another horror anthology series from around the same time, but I did see a couple episodes back in the day, and I revisited the show in between episodes of the 2023 adaptation, and I was surprised by how scary a lot of the stories actually were, despite a somewhat comical production value. And I was surprised that when I compare it to the 2023 series, which is presumably for an older audience, the 90s series was scarier. I think the 2023 Goosebumps is a really enjoyable adventure story with lots of lighter horror themes, but the teen drama aspects can overwhelm them a bit, resulting in some of the episodes being better than others. Why did you ask me to come here? Look, we all just wanted to talk to you about what happened. No, we didn't. Even though the teen drama stuff can drag, I don't really mind that much because I am a trash creature who loves teen dramas. And as teen dramas go, it's really not that bad. Please don't tell her. Okay, how about you don't tell my boyfriend what he should and shouldn't tell me? I watched all of Pretty Little Liars, just trust me on this one. Come on, close your lock up. I do feel bad for how poor Allison is treated by the narrative, though. I really just love this show's little Scooby gang, too. It's fun how the kids all get pulled into the horror one by one and then forge friendships through conquering evil. It's one of those tropes that I love and I'm always a sucker for. I really do enjoy this adaptation sense of humor. It's funny. How much of the Constitution have you read? Well, I listened to most of Hamilton. Not the Constitution. And quippy in a way that is sometimes reminiscent of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Seriously, I'd much rather take being bored over this constant feeling of dread that I have 24-7, right here, at all times. Very well, you eat this late. <laughs> You're gonna get heartburn. Get it? Heartburn? That's it. The Weekend at Margot's bit really had me cackling. James and Isabella also develop a really cute friendship over the course of everything they go through, and I love it a lot. I knew you were funny. I knew you were cool. Although I liked getting to know the characters, I almost wish it had been an anthology rather than serialized storytelling, because that has always sort of been the character and style of the Goosebumps series, both the books and the TV show. That said, I do think the end result overall is charming. Oh, oh you're actually not supposed to shake it. That's a throwback from when the chemicals were actually wet on the paper. It's a myth propagated by the hit song, Hey Ya. Uh. Just shake it like a Polaroid picture. Hey, uh, yeah, I'll And it definitely has some scary moments. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is happening? Hey, Margo? Although, even with the mostly spooky vibes, don't worry, they managed to squeeze in some hand horror. Like, it's specifically designed to torture me personally. I'm gonna go throw up now. There's genuinely tense and scary moments. And then stuff like the dupes created by the evil cuckoo clock are also treated as scary, but you literally just boop them and they explode. Like you can accidentally explode them. Although, the Goosebumps font-colored slime is a nice touch. But the vibe is more spooky than scary generally. There isn't much in the way of death or sexual themes, which is kind of refreshing for a teen show in the 2020s, honestly. The writing is mostly fine, although at times the pacing stumbles. I think I had to watch Go Eat Worms like three times before I absorbed it, and I found myself checking my phone a lot while trying to focus on watching the show, 
which doesn't happen if I'm totally sucked into the story. But where the writing is rough, performances from the cast, especially the teen characters, really do a lot to elevate it. One of my favorites is Issa Briones as Margot. So let's finish setting up before everyone gets here at nine. Hmm. Punctuality isn't weird. You guys are the weird ones. I'm the normal one. Being on time is cool. Who Star Trek fans might also recognize as both Dodge and Soji in Star Trek Picard. I heard you mean you eavesdropped on my private comms link using your super robot hearing. Well, you did ask me to monitor you for any potential drunk hailing incidents, yeah. so I extended the caution to drunk answering. I also really loved Miles McKenna as James. He and Zach Morris as Isaiah play off each other really well and have a sweet friendship. But but we did tell you not to go inside as well. Okay, wow, okay. I'm just trying to be fair to my best friend, okay? Bros before. Hmm? Homies. What? What? Say that again? Say it? Homies. Bros before homies. You guys are so tight and I respect that. Mm. And he has some of the best lines. Okay, look, we don't have to call her. I was in a hole for a week. Maybe we call her mom. Paging Isaiah Howard. He's right here. I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Will Price is also a lot of fun as Lucas. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. What did you just do? Are you okay? I, I think I got it. Yeah, I'm good. I'm chilling. It's all good. Wrong pipe. You're chilling. Do you, do you even know what kind of worms those were? What if it's a parasite or something? Well, it's all protein now. <laughs> and Anna Yi Puig is great as Isabella. Try to take it down a notch. Mm. Well, how's this? You're a high school guidance counselor. You literally failed at life. Her little brother is also played by another Star Trek alum, Ian Ho, who you might recognize as the most adorable child ever from the Strange New World season one episode, Lift Us Where Suffering Cannot Reach. I do not know many your age who grasp radial polarization. I'm interested in it because I thought it would be fun to have a friend across the galaxy. He is adorable here too. Vampires never go out of style. They literally can't because <laughs> they live forever. Because they're vampires. All the young actors are fun and add a lot of personality to their characters. The adults are pretty good too, but do have varying degrees of lifetime moviness to their performances and writing. I don't know what you guys are up to, but I just started an 8,000 piece puzzle of the Milky Way galaxy if anybody wants to help out. Although Justin Long is clearly having a blast as the eccentric English teacher, Mr. Brat. I want my own Tropic of Cancer or Bell Jar or Grapes of Wrath. Hold on one second. In order to do that, I need one thing. The same thing all of you have. It's just a matter of unlocking it, of being bold and firing up those imaginations. And once you do, I promise you, you will become writers like that. What? Go ahead. This is biology class. And I really enjoyed Rachel Harris as Nora. Nora, let's not get carried away. How about let's do get carried away, Victoria? You know, I mean, there's a ghost coming after our children. If now's not a good time to get a little carried away, I don't know when is. The storylines are loosely inspired by the book names they reference. <laughs> Some more so than others, although none of the stories really stay all that close to their source material. The soundtrack is so much fun and definitely one of the best parts of the series. The series tries to link its various references and Goosebumps stories together in an overarching plot, first through a vengeful spirit, and later through Slappy the Dummy. It works. Okay. We find out early on that the kids' parents know something about a teen who died when they were in high school, Harold Biddle, who the children are now seeing as a ghost after an ill-advised party at his seemingly unoccupied home. Harold is pretty scary and sad, and there are a few solid scenes with him. It's where his story intersects with Slappy, an evil living ventriloquist dummy. Karu, Mari, Odona, Loma, Malona, Karena. The things start to go off the rails. I'm the only one you can trust. Like, don't get me wrong. Slappy and any other creepy living doll makes me violently uncomfortable in an uncanny valley sort of way, but there aren't really any teeth behind it in this adaptation. And I think that's kind of wild, considering that the Goosebumps books and original television series were both marketed to a middle school and younger audience, but ultimately have a wickedness to them that the show lacks for the most part. <laughs> Help me. Talked. Please. 
Please. I revisited some of the books for this review, and one of my favorite things about them is how the endings almost always have a dark little twist just when you think all is well. The show does kind of try to do this too, and I don't dislike its ending for this season, but it still doesn't manage to feel as sinister as some of the stuff created for a much younger audience. Like in the book and 90s episode for Cuckoo Clock of Doom, the kid straight up unexists his sister and isn't even sorry about it. I'll get Tara! Where's Tara? So Tara has never been born. I suppose there's some way to go back in time and get her, right? I guess I probably ought to do that. And I will. One of these days. In the conclusion to Say Cheese and Die Again, an entire class gets its picture taken by the sinister Polaroid camera that makes bad things happen to people, but their fates are left unknown to us. And in the book version of The Haunted Mask, the main character's little brother Noah gets trapped in the mask, presumably forever. Hardly any of the stories have a straightforward, happy ending, and that's what makes them genuinely scary in a way that sticks with you, especially if you're a younger viewer or reader. I think it's interesting that this production seems to have aged up the characters, but aged down the scares. Also, their version of The Haunted Mask is so much weirder and less scary than the original book or even the 90s version of the story. Like, it's hard not to laugh at this girl winning over a whole party with this weird, creepy baby face mask. Even with the magic involved, the visuals look ridiculous. That said, the production value is definitely scaled up significantly in this adaptation, and I have to say I'm a big fan of the aesthetics of the series. Some of the CGI is rough, but when isn't it these days? <laughs> Maybe the streaming services should pay people. I like the Washington setting, and there's a creepiness to the visuals that sometimes sets more of a tone than the writing or actual outcomes do. It's nice that they don't just rely on a bluish filter for atmosphere the way season two of Cruel Summer did. It has a very Pacific Northwest feel to it that I like. I'm also a fan of Fifi the Vampire Dog. She's perfect and I love her. The chemistry between the characters really holds it all together though. I say I would like to bring Allison into the Haunted Housewives of Port Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, bad <sighs> idea. Oh my God, I knew you was gonna say that. Do you really wanna bring someone else into this mess? Wait, <laughs> what is the dynamic here? Did you guys date? And some of the individual episodes are really great. Reader Beware and Give Yourself Goosebumps were a couple of my favorites. I loved the idea of a scrapbook the kids could get trapped in, and it was genuinely a scary concept. Hey, did you ever get hungry? Lucas! No, like I said, I've mostly just been preoccupied with really extreme existential dread. Unfortunately, the build-up to the ending felt a little bit flimsy. Almost like the season could have just been eight episodes instead of ten, which is something I never say. It just seemed to drag on and on, and the final explanation, though inspired by the books, takes a lot of the stakes out of the first eight episodes, sort of leaving that arc feeling hollow. That said, it's a great time, and I loved all the little horror references. Some of my favorites were the discount mind flayer from Stranger Things. This bit that is reminiscent of Michael Myers. And this invasion of the body snatchers moment. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed this series and I'm looking forward to season two, although I kind of wish we'd get a fresh cast of characters and a new setting with a new creepy enemy for the season and leave the ending we got this season more open-ended. But I also really enjoyed this season's characters and I will definitely still watch season two even if it doesn't change it up. As a side note, I have to say, in researching this video, I was shocked and appalled to discover that they reissued the Goosebumps books with new covers in the late aughts and beyond, and they're so bad. Like, what is this? What were they thinking? The original covers were so much creepier. And this font. What is happening here? I hate it. Whoever redesigned these deserves a Goosebumps story kind of fate, is all I'm saying. I mean, look at these. It feels like a crime. The original covers were basically perfect, and I'm just upset they've been so callously tossed aside for this. I also think it's a bit puzzling to age up the stories and not simply use some of Stein's work for older kids, although I guess Netflix does own the rights to the Fear Street books. But he did write other horror for older kids as well, and there's kind of a dearth of, well, any content for middle school age kids these days. It isn't unsuccessful, though. But that's just my opinion. Have you seen the new Goosebumps show? What was your favorite episode? What's your favorite Goosebumps book? Let me know in the comments down below.
Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Vito Zane. Also, okay, okay. Look, my earrings, they are little goosebumps books. Huh? Huh?